Today, the show is called The Death of Clever. <laughs> well, yes, this is a, I guess I would call this a crowdsourced topic because there has never been an article that received so much tweeting to my attention as an article, a recent article in Ars Technica, uh, their their cybersecurity guy, Gan, uh, Dan Gooden, uh, did a very nice, very comprehensive four-page piece about sort of a, a snapshot on where we stand with password hacking. And obviously, this is a recurring topic for us, um, but I, I decided that we really needed I, – I, I, well, first of all, many people were tweeting, Steve, what do you think? What do you think? Is he right? Blah, blah, blah. Now, he didn't really draw any conclusions. We will, because this is what we do in the podcast, have some takeaways from this. But what I felt as I was reading it was that I, I needed to make sure our listeners understood something that I don't think I've ever made sufficiently clear. So – I, I titled this Password Cracking Update, The Death of Clever, <laughs> Be because what this really drives home is that is – and this is really interesting, too, because this is a consequence of the breaches that we've had. We've been you – know, we've covered these massive breaches for the last few years. Well, it turns out having access to – more than a hundred million actual in use passwords, which is what are now available freely downloadable over the internet, having those p actual passwords has changed the complexion of password cracking. All of those things that you know that we sort of wink wink about doing, like you know, uh, changing. Uh, alphabetic characters into the numbers that they resemble or, or you know, those sorts of things. And we'll talk about what those are because they've all been analyzed now. What, what's happened is, and this is an, another thing you would expect, over time there's evolution of the technology. The cracking is really getting better. And so, so this today's podcast, driven by so many questions who that were tweeted to me about it uh, will update everyone. And if anybody still thinks that they're being cute with their, you know, the way they're designing passwords, um, I hope to be able to increase their security further by putting them off of those habits because they're just not working any longer. Good. Uh, this oh, will be very – I'm looking forward to – I actually saw that article. I read that article. And it scared me a little bit because um, – well, he mentions a uh, a well-known person who has a password that is, I would have thought, secure, and how easy it was to crack it. It reminded me a lot of the of, a, of passwords that I have used. Well, yes, and and, and that's that's really what I want to. I, I think one of the takeaways is um, he, he actually refers to a um, a doctoral <sighs> thesis uh, by someone who analyzed how badly human chosen passwords are so the idea is you just you don't want it to be up to you yeah. you want to turn Generate. over yep. responsibility to I, something else. i've started after reading that article more religiously using the generator built into yep. LastPass, and i said it for 12 characters and yep. and as special characters mix and everything although i'm a little disappointed i opened an account at a new bank the other day and <laughs> I was actually quite disappointed. First of all, I could only use I can't remember what it was, 12 or 13. It, after that it stopped. You know, I yep. couldn't I couldn't use more characters, which I know from listening to the show means it wasn't they're not hashing passwords or it wouldn't matter. Uh and second that they wouldn't allow me to use special characters. Yeah, I get reports of these sorts of bad security practices constantly. Gosh. So it's it's amazing how widespread this is. And yet they and, use two-factor authentication. They do all yeah. sorts of, you know, jump through hoops things. So I'll just turn that on yeah. and now I feel a little bit better about it. But That's good. Yeah. So Dan's article uh, was, uh, or his security blog posting, was Passwords Under Assault. 
you can anyone who wants to read the entire four page piece can just Google passwords under assault. And uh, it's the first link that comes up. And he titled it Why Passwords Have Never Been Weaker and Crackers Have Never Been Stronger, which sort of reminds us of of the famous um, uh, Bruce Schneier quote where he noted years ago that attacks never get weaker. They only get better. Um, and, and Dan said, thanks to real world data, the keys to your digital kingdom are under assault. So essentially what's happened is there have been consequences. There's, there's evolutionary effects that we would expect. That is passwords are, you know, very tasty fruit for hackers to try to grab. And unfortunately, um, websites have proven themselves surprisingly inept at managing user logon credentials. You know, we are we're we're routinely actually covering the the you know major breaches in passwords. It was just a couple months ago in June that LinkedIn famously lost control of 6.5 million passwords. Um, what's happened is, as a consequence of those and other breaches, there was um, uh, there was another major gaming site that lost, I think it was 32 million of their user passwords all at once, um, and and so what what what's happened is it is it's moved the the hackers understanding of of what passwords people are using from theoretical like you know the planets of the klingon universe to the actual and you know we've learned weird things like monkey is used yeah un- unusually often leo <laughs> you know it's so embarrassing <laughs> because it in fact was my default password many years ago <laughs> You know, but how you know how That's obscure terrible. is that? But yeah. the point is that that for some bizarre reason, lots of people chose the word monkey. Yeah. Well, nobody would guess that. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's only by looking, doing statistical analysis of actual password databases that these sorts of things come out. Another thing that is often occurring is that people capitalize words. Instead of them being like all uppercase or all lowercase, they tend to, you know, first character is capital, then the rest of them are lowercase. Many times people create passwords which are a word followed by four numbers, like, you know, their their date of birth, for example, or, you know, 1492, you know, what, you know so, something that is memorable to them, but they think, oh, this is, you know, but clever. That's, that's what you're talking about with password haystacks. That's padding. That's not a bad thing as long as it's not guessable, right? Well, it, okay, so the the problem with with patterns, which are, see, like like the idea of, of, of eight characters where the first one is uppercase and the other ones are lowercase, and then, for example, a four-digit number. If you made it five digits, that is, if you if you broke the pattern, then you get security. If you don't, what what analysis of databases have shown hackers is that they're in the same way that for some bizarre reason the the password monkey gets chosen way more often than 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 randomly. People are using eight character. Um, alphabetic words followed by four character numbers. I mean, exactly that pattern. And so, so what happens is if, if that's known or even just believed, that is, if it's, if it's tried for, then it completely changes the math. For example, say that, say that you didn't know what, the, what a 12-character password was. And that it could use the full alphabet and special characters and numbers. Well, any one character, as we've talked about many times, could have like approximately 96 different possibilities. So 12 of those would be 96 to the power of 12. 
since it's 96 for the first character, 96 for the second character, 96 for the third. But we also know that that really only applies if if the 12 characters are really random. They could be anything. And 96 raised to the power of 12 is 612.7 times 10 to the 21. Huge number. That's 612,700 billion billion possibilities for 12 characters. But people don't choose their 12 characters randomly. And what statistical analysis of these these captured online databases have shown hackers is that as i was saying for example there's a there's a huge preponderance of first letter is capitalized the next seven are lowercase alpha and then there's followed by four digits that is like a year you know it's something so, so, something generally in the 20th century <laughs> so what that does is that dramatically changes the math. Now, that means you only have 26 to the raised to the 8th power, since you have only, you know, you're going to have capital A through capital Z, then lowercase a through Z for the next seven characters. Then, say that you didn't even constrain it to a, a modern era year, but you just did 0, 0, 0, 0 to to 9999. So now you're at 26 to the 8th times 10,000. Well, that's only 2.08 million possibilities compared to 612,700 billion billion possibilities. So the point is that by what what hackers have done is by analyzing the actual databases of captured passwords, they have found all of these tendencies. It is, it is, it's absolutely no longer the case that we can do anything clever. We cannot use like princess where we change the S's into dollar signs. They got that. <laughs> you can't, you can't use, Pratt. you know, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leo. You can't use, you know, turn your E's into threes. Uh. They got that too. I mean, all of the all of the kinds of things that people typically do, thinking that they're being clever, trying to sort of essentially, they're we're, we're trying to compromise. We're 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 trying to come up with something that's you know, sort of ours and that we think is is no, you know nobody else is going to do well. What happened? Surprisingly, because we're all human and we have similar experience, we're generally doing the same things. It turns out when you statistically look at an at a hundred million passwords, there aren't that many possible things that people can do that that, that you know meet these the, the these criteria. And of course, there's certainly some communication among people not everyone is coming up with these things on their own they're they're you know they're talking to their friends about oh like you know what do you do how do you make passwords and so they share some of their ideas oh it was the site was rockyou.com which in 2009 through a sequel injection attack lost their 32 million plain text passwords which all went into this huge 100 million plus hopper for statistical analysis. So the other thing that has happened is, and this is the evolutionary part, not only are hackers really focusing on this, but as we know, there's been huge movement in technology over time. The, we, we've talked about how GPUs, the graphic processing units in um, th that are now powering our our graphics cards in order to give us the 3D realism and, and high frame rate performance that we want for gaming, those can be repurposed to create essentially cryptographic pipelines, which 
are able to run cryptographic algorithms at very high speed. One of the takeaways from, from all of this is that hashing was never the right thing to do. Hashing was better than leaving things in plain text, certainly. But hashes were designed, as we have said before, for speed. They were, they, they were designed to be efficient. But efficiency is exactly what you don't want in password security because it allows brute forcing to run at, at tens of millions of guesses per second. So, so while it's certainly better that sites have been hashing their passwords than not, it turns out that we no longer should consider that very useful. Certainly not if there are, they are unsalted hashes. The, 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 link, the LinkedIn breach where 6.5 million passwords were lost, to give you some sense for this, for how, for, for, what this really means in the real world. Um, independent security researcher Jeremy Gosney took the LinkedIn, the, the, the leaked LinkedIn unsalted but hashed, it was hashed with SHA-1 database. He applied it against his 500 million strong word list of common words using a, a block of GPUs which are able to make 15.5 billion guesses per second. This is not the NSA. This is some guy in his bedroom who can do 15.5 billion oh, guesses boy. per second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Against LinkedIn's 6.5 million passwords, he cracked the first 20% in 30 seconds. He had one out of every five cracked in of that 6.5 million passwords cracked in 30 seconds. The next um, 33% took two hours. So in two hours and 30 seconds, he had 53% of them cracked. It began to slow down exponentially so that after a day, 24 hours, he was at 64% of the 6.5 million passwords cracked. And after five days, he had an additional 24%. So, I mean, we're not talking long-term protection here if a database gets loose, even if it is salted. It's, it, that, that, that's, that's no longer the case. The other interesting thing to uh, Google is a new open source uh, free GPU-based cracking facility called HashCat. H-A-S-H and then space cat, HashCat, so-called, calls itself Advanced Password Recovery. It's the first word, the first result in Google and it's just hashcat.net also. Um, and it says, you know, download the latest version. The requirements are, and uh, for NVIDIA users, you need to have their Forceware version 290.40 or later. For AMD users, you need to have Catalyst 12.4 or, or later. And it looks, you know, like a very nice professional piece of work. Under Features... Uh, they, they claim the world's fastest MD5 crypt, PH Pass, MS Cache 2, and WPA WPA2 cracker. The world's first and only GP GPU rule based engine. Its multi GPU support can run 16 graphics processing units in parallel. Uh, has native binaries for both Linux and Windows. Um, low resource utilization. You can still watch movies or play games while cracking in the background. Isn't, <laughs> that, isn't that convenient? There's plenty of CPUs to spare. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, focuses on highly iterated modern hashes 
uh, uses dictionary-based attacks. So you can even pause it and resume it while cracking. So it has all the features of a modern password cracking system. Uh, can uh, read words from a file, so you can have dictionaries, can read them from standard in. It has an integrated thermal watchdog, just in case you overheat your system by running too many this hashes. Is nicely too done. Nicely done. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Yeah. More than 20 algorithms, MD5, Joomla, OS Commerce, SHA-1, Base64, Oracle 11G. Here we have OS X version 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, and a little bit lower is 10.7. Not to be outdone. We've got double MD5, SHA-256. Oh, there's NT Land Manager. Microsoft's NTLM is there. And on and on and on. So, yeah. Oh, and runs in both 32 and 64-bit OSs. Tested and fully supported. And free. Did I mention that? Free. Yes, free. Free. So, so you no longer need to be a GPU programming guru. And, and of course, this is the this is the same pattern that we see over and over and over. Remember when Fire Sheep was released, which allowed anyone to download this add-on for Firefox, wander over to Starbucks, and people's pictures and logon credentials started popping onto the screen. What we're seeing is the the standard evolution that that in in password cracking technology that once you know truly was rocket science now it's turnkey um I mean, it's not quite where moxie is with you know capture packets through the ether dump it into his cloud crack and and he'll handle all that for you but somebody who is interested in playing with this no longer needs to write a lot of code or understand it there are videos on that site um, you know, how to's, forums, and uh, an offer to download the latest version into your GPU, and you too can start uh, cracking like crazy. And of course, those forums will have links to the 100 million plus password databases and 500 million word lists and so forth. So, I mean, th this, this really has gone exponential. In terms of the, the the fun that people are having and and how easy it is, <laughs> nice way to put it, <laughs> to get <laughs> to get in get to get into the password cracking business. So you know, um, looking at these at these lists, the, the the essentially no one is any longer believing that people's passwords are truly maximum entropy random what this says is i mean it is it is as you said earlier leo using a last pass generated long absolutely unmemorizable password is the best thing you can do now my my haystacks notion was a was a compromise admittedly it was it was the recognition that in the face of brute forcing, length trumps length, well, l length trumps complexity because if you're off by one character, you get no result whatsoever. It's got to be an exact match. So close doesn't count. So the idea was the 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 password haystacks idea was was to get you something long if if you couldn't use LastPass or you, for whatever reason, you didn't want to, you needed something memorable that would not be quickly crackable. That's the problem, it, memorable. And that's where we get this complication, right? Yes. And now, it is still the case. And I think on the maybe the last page of Dan's four-page piece, he shows a very interesting chart, which you should put on the screen if you can find it there, Leo, yes. where it goes exponential. Um, there is still the so-called password cracking wall, which which means in the if 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 none of these dictionary attacks work, if if your password isn't something a normal word 
where the E's are changed into threes or three exclamation points are added to the end. Or, you know, if, if, if it's not something where you have been clever, but in fact, it is not it, the, the password you're using doesn't fail in any of those ways. And you have to assume now clever is broken. Clever is no longer good enough. If it, if it doesn't match that, then you're back to brute forcing. So, and, and boy, and does it go you, up after seven characters yes. of true randomness. It gets yes. impossible. And it doesn't matter if you use a GPU right. or if you use cloud cracking right. or anything. So, so, to, so to put a number on it, there's a picture shown of a, a homebrew $12,000 machine containing eight AMD Radeon HD 7970 right. GPU cards Running Hashcat, it requires 12 hours to brute force the entire eight-character password key space. Oh, it, of okay. random, random numbers, random yes. letters. That, now, now, remember that the, 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 what I said at the very top of the password haystacks page was if every single one is tested, sooner or later they will get yours. Right. So this thing for twelve thousand dollars, eight AMD Radeon GPU cards running Hashcat, takes twelve hours to test every possible eight character password. That's upper and lower digits and symbols. Yes, but now thing. remember you add one character to that yeah. and it's ninety-six times longer. One more character, 96 times again. One more character, 96 times again. So that's why this thing still exponentiates. It goes straight up. Right. Because, um, because as, if you really have very high entropy, if you have not, if your password hasn't crumbled, because you did something that you thought was clever. Oh, another one that they that, that is mentioned here, I thought was interesting. Was that apparently again, lots of people think, "Oh, I'm being tricky." No one's ever, no one's going to think of this. Is to spell a word forwards and then concatenate that word backwards. Whoops, they know about that too. So <laughs> they will... that's not that tricky. <laughs> so, so, and really, that's it shouldn't the be the death of clever. The just the death of death of kind of clever, or maybe clever, or you think you're clever. Yeah, I just don't think you can be clever enough. That's yeah, the that's problem. It. Yeah, random is, is better what, than clever. What has been learned is that that we're just not very good. Yeah. at coming up with something really clever. I mean, you know, the classic was transposing the keys on the keyboard. Yeah, they know about that, too. There are <laughs> dictionaries of all the words shifted one up and right. over to the left or, you know, one down and over to the right and so forth. All of that. So the idea is that what we as users need to appreciate is in this day and age, this is the low-hanging fruit. The the hackers are just having a ball, literally spending their time thinking, okay, um, what, you know, they, the, they'll look at a password that was captured and think, that looks random. Where did that come from? And they'll realize, oh, look, that's shifted down and to the right from a normal word in the English language. So they add that strategy to their to their cracking library, and suddenly all passwords of that form fall to the addition of that strategy. And this is only going to get better in the future. So if, if you haven't yet switched to something that will not fall to this kind of attack, the sooner you do, the better. Wow. Um, and one other piece of, of analysis showed that the typical web user is um, they're logging on to um, – I'm trying to find the number here. I just saw it. It's like 20 – I think it's uh, 26 different sites but only using six and a half on average. That is between six and seven 
different passwords. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it is still the case that we're seeing cross site. Oh, it's 25, it's 25 separate accounts, mm-hmm. but uses between six and seven passwords for protection. So there is still a substantial amount of password reuse going on. And, you know, we know why that's not safe. Because if a site like LinkedIn with its six and a half million passwords and associated email addresses, if those passwords get cracked and they, you know, 90% of them have been now after a couple months and you use the same credential elsewhere, then you're very vulnerable to impersonation, which is, of course, all of what this is supposed to be protecting us from. So um, the argument is that, yes, over time, we are we are moving to multi-factor authentication. But unfortunately, there's, you know, today in this day and age, we're still being forced to authenticate with passwords. And and the you know, that's this is where the action is. People are having fun just with the idea that a GPU has this much computing power and all these resources are available on the internet. It is you no longer need to be a rocket scientist in order to to play these games and and play with this stuff. And the consequence is that more and more people are going to be doing so. And that you know, freely downloadable software is going to be getting more and more clever. So that anything that that you've thought of that you you think is like your trick is is you know <laughs> it's though the, you know your tricks have gotten loose or people like your tricks have gotten loose they've been analyzed and added to the strategy so that it's no longer true it's no longer just simple try every possible password you know a a a a a a a a a a a b a a a a a c and so forth so what we need to do is 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 abandon this and just use entropy, ultra high entropy passwords and something then to manage them. Like, you know, LastPass, of course, is what I use. One password, um, you know, and, there, and there, there's a collection of, you know, of great utilities to help people remember. I haven't looked at any of the others. That, that is the security of any of the others other than LastPass. So that's the one as we know, that I've looked at closely. And as far as I can tell, they've done everything right. But um, I would say from this point on, and as you have the chance, you really want to, um, you want to migrate around from, or m- migrate away from things you did that you felt were clever. Because if, if those get loose, and that's, unfortunately, that's the, that is the attack model today. It's not somebody logging in through the web interface, guessing your account. No, it's their database on the back end escapes, and and then millions of credentials are being are are being cracked in parallel. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have all these tricks that I use, but see, I, it, it really you're convincing me the tricks are just a bad idea. You just should use totally random. Passwords. Who would have guessed that everyone would choose monkey? You know, no. we weren't telling each other. We I didn't were think that choose- was a trick. I knew that was bad. A dictionary <laughs> word, yeah. But then, I mean, all these other tricks are bad, too, apparently. So Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. But, I mean, think about it. Anything you can think of, they can, too. But right. more importantly, you thought of it and you used it. And then some website where you used it right. got cracked. What yeah. happens is the hackers look closely at the ones they could not crack mm-hmm. and they go hmm why couldn't we oh crack? that's neat yeah and they try and to find patterns in it they zero exactly they yeah. zero in on the ones they couldn't crack and that leads them to strategies they don't yet have crackers for and so they add crackers for those strategies the good news is we're talking about this on the podcast we've got you know tens of thousands of listeners who are Hearing this, who have advanced notice. Are doing as I'm doing and changing their passwords right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, the nice thing, too, is you can, you, you can use something like LastPass that has learned all of your passwords. 
and go through and figure out which ones you really need to change. I have had some neat feedback also um, from our, our podcast about, um, was it Tom Honan? Matt Tom? Honan. Matt. Matt, yeah, Matt. Um, got a little bit of alliteration there or, or, or dyslexia. Um, yeah, Matt, um, many people were um, focusing their um, password recovery in the same way that he was. And so I've had a lot of feedback from people who said, hey, you know, thanks for explaining that. I was doing the same thing. I'm, I've broken my accounts apart now so that they're no longer chaining in the yeah. same way that, that, that Matt yeah. was. So yeah. Yeah. that's good, too. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, we're able to help people. LastPass has a security, a password security audit feature. I did, I'm seeing Jesse tells me in the chat room. I didn't you know, know I thought it did. And yeah. I, I, yes. So try that. It, I, you know, it finds duplicate passwords, I think, is mostly what it does. But uh, well, but that's good, too, because we know that we don't want to have unique reuse. Is good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm more and more using that generate from LastPass to uh, generate passwords. It seems to, I do, seems too. To I, I resisted it, it at first because it's like, oh, you know, that looks just, look, let's just, just look looks nasty. like total noise. Yeah. But that's the point. Yeah. You want something that looks like noise and trust LastPass to remember it for you. Mr. Steve Gibson is the man at grc.com. That's where you can find Spinrite, his uh, his bread and butter, and the world's best hard drive maintenance and recovery utility. Spinrite at grc.com. He's got a lot of freebies there, too, though, including lots of information on passwords and uh, and uh, security of all kinds of freebies. It's grc.com. That's where you'll find the most compact versions of this show. There's a 16-kilobit audio version Steve's makes available, and also transcriptions, which are even more compact.